financial centers that cater predominantly to non residents account for an outside share of cross border financial activity. These so called cross border financial centers are typically located in small economies. In contrast to global financial centers located in large economies. Having said that, we will be referring to the latest Bank for International Settlements quarterly review with the theme of outside stall of cross border financial centers. Economies of scale and scope benefit global centers, but physical distance works against the tendency of financial activity to concentrate. So do regulation and taxation, which have set cross-border financial centers apart and propelled their rise. At the same time, these centers pose challenges to regulatory consistency across countries and complicate the analysis of capital flows. Financial centers that specialize in cross-border activity have become an entrenched feature of the global financial system. Until the 1970s, international financial intermediation was concentrated in a few major cities that also served as centers for domestic activity, notably London and New York. These figures demonstrate small economies that host cross-border financial centers so their share of global external assets and liabilities rise from around 15% in the late 1980s to 30% in the late 2010s, even as their share of global GDP remained constant at less than 3%. However, when we consider G20 economies as shown in the right-hand side graph, we can see their external assets and liabilities are somewhere around 55%, whereas their share of global GDP is nearly 80%. Now we will be discussing what di distinguishes cross-border financial centers from offshore centers. Cross-border financial centers cater predominantly to non-residents but are not necessarily synonymous with offshore centers. Historically, BIS has defined offshore centers as countries with banking sectors dealing primarily with non-residents and no in foreign currency on a scale out of proportion to the size of host economy. On the other hand, offshore centers have come to be characterized as jurisdictions with low or zero taxation, moderate or light financial regulation, banking secrecy and anonymity. This is as per IMF. This demonstrates some cross-border centers have become much larger and others have faded away. When we consider the period from 1995 to 2005 via 2020, we can see some of the countries such as Netherlands, Hong Kong, and such other countries have emerged as some of the newly built cross border centers. On the other hand, we can see that some other countries, namely Liberia, Bahrain, Vanuatu, Panama, they are being fading away as global financial centers. Now we will be looking at challenges posed by cross border financial centers. Since their emergence in 1970s, cross border financial centers have secured an outsized role in the global financial system. Cross-border centers offer benefits to the global financial system, but also pose challenges. 
to its root month functioning. While consolidated supervision acts as a safeguard against regulatory arbitrage in banking, non-bank financial sector possesses a greater challenge to regulatory consistency. Moreover, cross-border centers complicate risk analysis by obscuring the ultimate source and destination of investments and even the type of investment. The opaqueness of activity in cross-border financial centers highlights the usefulness of complementing the residence perspective taken in the standard international statistical framework with a consolidated view based on the controlling parent. With that, we'll be concluding the presentation. For more of these kind of videos and presentations, find a Google, Gayan, Nainajit. Thanks for watching.